Chris wants to invest $5,600 in a savings account that pays 5.9% simple interest. How long will it take for this investment to double in value? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So first, let me say that this problem is actually stumping a lot of classmates, probably because it doesn't appear to have all the information you need. But we're going to dig a little deeper and see if we can work this out together. Let's start by finding out what we're given and write it down and identify it. So Chris wants to invest $5,600. When you invest money into an account, that amount of money is called your principal. So that means our principal is $5,600. So let's start there. We also know that this account pays 5.9% simple interest. That means we have an interest rate or an R value of 0. 0.059, right? 5.9% and we either divide 5.9 by 100 or we move our decimal two places to the left to give us 0 0.059. And then finally we have how long will it take? Okay, how long will it take? Hmm, that's a question about time and it seems like we don't know what the time is. In fact, that's what we're going to be solving for. How long will it take? And then one more piece. And that is for this investment to double in value. For this investment to double in value. If we want an investment to double in value, our original investment was 5600 So really, what we're looking for is that our future amount, or A, is twice our investment. What is twice, or 2 times 5600 Well, 2 times 5600 or 5600 is just 11,200. In other words, we want our future amount to be 11,200. So we have four bits of information, P, R, T, and A. And where we wanna go is we wanna go to the formula that relates them all. In fact, that's how I would do it. I would go to that formula that relates all of those values, A, P, R, T. Do you remember what it was? Our formula that relates A, P, R, and T is as follows. It's A equals P times the quantity 1 plus R, T. Does that look familiar? And let's fill in the information that we're given, substituting each letter and replacing it with the value that we've written down. So A gets replaced with 11,200. P gets replaced with 5,600. R, that's going to get replaced with 0 0.059. And T, well, that's what we don't know. So what we have now, instead of a formula, is more of an equation. 11,200 equals 5,600 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.059t. And if you love algebra, then you're like rubbing your hands together right now and saying, oh, sweet, I know how to solve this equation. In fact, why did I say we know how to solve something? Because what do we do when we have an equation like this? We're trying to find our variable t. So we are going to have to isolate that t and use some algebraic processes like addition, subtraction property, multiplication, division property to solve for t. Now we took a look at this in an earlier module that we were working on with linear equations. Let's see if we can't remember how to do this. To solve this equation, different people will take different approaches. Some people will start off right away and divide both sides by 5600. And if you understand that and why you're doing that, go for it and do that. I find that most students um, take a look at this and are not quite sure what to do. And so if that's generally the case, then in the past, 
I have mentioned that to solve a linear equation where a variable stuck inside of parentheses, sometimes the best tool is to use the distributive property to help you solve. That is, take the element on the outside of the quantity and multiply it in to each of the inner two terms. And I'm just going to put down next to it distributive property and see if that rings a bell with some things that you have done in the past. Distributive property. And this was one technique we used when solving equations. We simplified the right by using the distributive property and multiplying 5600 into a quantity. So let's do that. On the left side, I still have 11,200, but on the right side now, I have 5,600 times 1, which is 5,600. And I'm just going to emphasize that I'm multiplying it times 1. And then I'm going to have 5,600, and I'm going to multiply it times 0.059t. That's how we apply the distributive property. Well, let's simplify. So 11,200 equals 5,600 times 1, which we just said was 5,600. And for the next guy, I'm going to whip out my calculator because I don't happen to know what 5,600 times 0 0.059 is. But when I pull out my calculator and multiply, I get that 5,600 times 0 0.059 Sorry about that, I accidentally stopped the recording. But as I was saying, we take 5,600 and multiply it times 0 0.059 using a calculator. Don't know what that is off the top of my head, so I'm pulling out my calculator. And that's giving me 330.4t. Now this equation is just a hair simpler than the one we started with, right? Is this, is this starting to ring a bell? Does this look familiar? What is our next step when we're solving this equation for t, when we're isolating for t? Do you remember what to do next? Well, a lot of students, what they first do is they use the subtraction property, and that's what I like to do. I like to get rid of the 5,600. So by removing the 5,600, we will be isolating the term that has a t in it. And how do we get rid of the 5,600? Well, we use the subtraction property of equality, and we subtract both sides of our equation by 5,600. On the left, 11,200 minus 5,600 is 5,600. On the right, 5,600 minus 5,600, well, that's just zero, right? Our whole goal was to cancel that out plus 330.4t. So I'm going to write down 330.4t. Oh, we are so close. I can feel it. Do you feel it? Do you see how close we are? So what's our last two steps? Let me just go over here. I'm running out of room down here. So let me just go over here with this equation. We have 5,600 equals... 330.4t. And our goal is to find out what is the time, our t value, and how do we do that? Yep, yep, yep. This time we're going to use the division property of equality, and we're going to divide both sides of our equation by that coefficient on t, or if we like the number in front of t. Because if we take 330.4 divided by 330.4, we just get 1. And 1 times t is just t. And so that just leaves us with t on the right side, right? On the left side, ooh, got to pull my calculator out because I do not know what 5,600 divided by 330.4 is. So I'm going to pull out my calculator or Desmos and take 5,600 divide 330.4. And that's going to give us approximately 16.949.15, etc., etc., etc. So this is an approximation for T. But the good news is we've isolated T, 
that's what we were originally looking for, right? If we go back up here, that's what we were looking for up here. We don't know what T is, so that's what we're solving for. And we come up with 16.94915 years because we're talking about an annual interest. And what does it finally state? It says round our answer to the nearest tenth. So we look to the right. That number is less than five, which means we don't have to round up. So that tells me the final answer, which is in order to have our investment double, it will take us 16.9 years. Wow, that was a really long problem. That was tricky. Why? Because we had to go back and use solving of simple linear equations in order to actually come up with our answer. Anyways, good luck as you work through these homeworks on your own. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out.